All right, well, uh, Cooperative uh, Governance and Traditional Affairs Minister William Kize will uh, today report back on government's municipal recovery program. The initiative is aimed at nursing dysfunctional and distressed municipalities back to health. Municipal expert Mielani Olani joins us now in studio to discuss this. Thank you so very much for joining us as always. Uh, good morning, Flo. Now, as a start, what are you expecting to hear from uh, Minister William Kize today when he delivers this uh, progress report on municipal recovery program? Are you expecting good? news? Well, at this stage, uh, we've seen the minister going around the country, uh, going to the various provinces and engaging with various municipalities. Uh, we've also seen meetings which were held at the highest level where uh, they were invited to Cape Town to come and present uh, their case. So what we're expecting now is some kind of a plan that says, what is, it what is it that is going to be done with the 87 municipalities? And those are not the only municipalities which must receive focus, yeah. but there's the rest of the municipalities because if we gauge from the last uh, uh, present Presentations. Very few municipalities, for instance, have financial recovery plans. We are still seeing a lot of vacancies within uh, the various municipalities, where in some cases the municipal managers have had, uh, to, to, are acting, uh, chief financial officers are still acting. And I think the one that we must also focus on is that of technical managers who are supposed to run the big capital budgets within the municipalities. So, well, we're expecting a plan to understand exactly how it's going to uh, unfold. Mm. We want to hear what is going to be done around the governance. We want to understand what is going to be done around service delivery. And there's also the issues of revenue, which I've mentioned uh, earlier. Now, no doubt the minister will say that it has uh, been affected. I mean, it, it is his project after all. But what, in your views, are sort of, what is the recovery plan? I mean, I, I guess my question is, what should encompass this financial recovery uh, plan that you speak of? Well, on well, the recovery plan, particularly if the financial one, is you need to look at the entire organization. We need to look at the budget yeah. to ensure that all of the budgets which are being passed by municipalities, they are not overextending themselves and they can afford those budgets. Uh, we need to understand what they are doing from a revenue collection and ge not just collections point of view, but looking entirely at the revenue value chain to ensure that there is all the building blocks of completeness of revenue, protection of revenue, as well as projects which are going to increase the revenue of which the sum total of that uh, is what we would call revenue enhancement. Mm -hmm. We also would like to see, for instance, on the critical services that must be delivered as to whether uh, those services are being planned for, uh, is there is, is sufficient money in the budget, especially the capital budget? Is it fully funded, uh, that particular budget? And are there plans in place? And when are they going to go out to advertise uh, for those services which are going to be required within the current financial year? Because what we're seeing is there's a slowness around getting into the market to procure those services. And by the time we get to a halfway, the budgets have to be revised and adjusted and monies have to be shifted. Some have to be moved to other areas. So those are the things that we would like to see. But but let's understand that it's a slow road to recovery, given the structural issues which have already taken place within the municipalities. If you look at what the AGA also pronounced, it's a slow road of recovery. But of the 87 municipalities, which are the ones which are most dysfunctional, those are the ones that would, uh, would need urgent uh, uh, intervention as well as attention to improve things. Mr. Oleni, when we're talking about a good uh, recovery plan, one would think, especially where one picks up issues of mis mismanagement or even corruption, in some cases that, uh, you know, heads, heads will roll. Is there a possibility in this instance where, where there is uh, corruption that is picked up that indeed there will be a situation where investigations then need to happen and people will ultimately have to be shifted? Broadly, we would, uh, we would expect uh, what was called consequence management yeah. because whatever the consequences uh, or whatever the issues that are done which are done incorrectly uh, must be dealt with. Uh, so for us, a package that deals with the recovery for a municipality is one that also look at, looks at uh, cleaning up that municipality from whatever uh, suspicions or, for instance, transactions that have not gone properly to be regularized properly if those services are required. Uh, so, so for us, is we're looking at the various packages, including uh, investigations that must be carried out and put to rest, where, for instance, there's been embezzlement of funds, but more broadly, to look at how do you uh, restructure that operating model of a mm -hmm. municipality to start being functional. How do you fill those vacancies so that those uh, people who should be doing the work uh, are allowed to uh, carry out the work? And also the capacity, because the big thing here is we're looking at capability. And broadly, capability would describe a strategy, leadership, as well as service delivery. So those capabilities that must be in place uh, uh, need to be discharged, and they, must, they, they require people and capacity to discharge those. But the other aspect which uh, we just want to reflect on, these municipalities which are dysfunctional, 
they, they, they don't have money. Their balance sheets are not strong. Mm -hmm. uh, so so as, 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 as a question is, is there going to be a package which is going to be structured around these municipalities? Yes, we understand that there will be people deployed within these municipalities with budgets, but when they need to kickstart projects, will there be funding that is made available? Because they, they will not be able to approach uh, commercial banks or any other institutions where they can borrow money from. So that is the other critical question that uh, needs to be answered uh, from this uh, recovery plan point. And, of view. and perhaps at, the, at that point, I should take a step further. Maybe this is where I should have started. You say that, you know, when when you're talking about a municipality that is dysfunctional, you're saying there's no money, that the, 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 the balance sheets are off. But, I, 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 you know, you've spoken to us many, many times uh, about the state of our municipalities on, on this show. Um, Minister Mkiza had announced that uh, there were 87 distressed and dysfunctional municipalities. When one says that a, a municipality is distressed and, and dysfunctional, what does one actually mean? And, and, and what is it at the core of that distress and that dysfunctionality? One it cannot meet its obligations. So if you look at the fact that, you know, there are salaries to be paid, there are supplies to be paid, uh, those municipalities typically uh, even have to uh, restructure or use money from grants, mm. which are not earmarked for the operations uh, to go and pay uh, for, for, for th their obligations. And oftentimes you'll find that uh, the supplies go unpaid for long periods of time. Some municipalities have also gone uh, with their employees also not uh, being paid. Secondly, if you look at the budgets, for instance, the budgets are typically inflated uh, and those budgets are not funded. Uh, the revenue side, you'll find that uh, it's depressed. The collections are not uh, happening as they should. Uh, there's a target broadly of about 95% that must be uh, collected or 95 cents in a rent. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that, you know, they're collecting way below. The other aspect is that uh, of not uh, having critical vacancies uh, being filled, uh, municipal managers acting, CFOs acting, technical managers acting, and those critical positions are affected. And you'll even go deeper into the structures where you find that the people who are supposed to be compiling the budgets are not there they can't even produce annual financial statements so there's a myriad of things that must be looked at and from a service delivery point of view the basic services if you look at water sewer for those who provide those services yeah. are not uh, uh, being carried out or the collection of waste is not being carried out some contracts or service providers who must be in place are not uh, the contracts are not in place they've been uh, they've expired so basically you're looking at a malaise of things uh, that have gone wrong and it's basically uh, if you want a laissez-faire type situations, you know, mm -hmm. where you know, things are just happening. And that's also characterized with uh, uh, labor action or uh, uh, strikes that, you know, also take place. And also then you'll find out the spillages into the communities where they are not receiving services, the shutdown of those municipalities. So those are typically the things uh, that uh, you look for. And obviously from an uh, uh, audit outcomes point of view, you'll find that, you know, they've been disclaimed, uh, those municipalities, and there's nothing uh, further that can be reported on them except, you know, to go and fix a whole uh, list of things that are, that are broken. All right, uh, Mr. Mielani Oleni, it's always a great pleasure to have your great uh, insight and analysis on the show. We do appreciate you very much. Thank you for that. Thank you, sir.